Our dear viewers and listeners, we we'll greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome you to today's Bible study. And as you gather together, and invite somebody to join you. Let's dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you yes. for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of salvation. Yes. We thank you for your word. Yes. As today we yield our spirits to your word as it works through us that you perform that you will and do in our hearts, yes. that your word may be amplified mm. to bring hope, mm. to bring salvation, yes. to bring joy and comfort mm. to a hurting world. Mm. Be glorified, King of glory, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We're continuing in the book of Revelation. As we come close to the end of this wonderful journey. And we will take our reading today from the book of Revelation chapter 22. From verse 6. And we will end at verse 7. Let's read. The Bible says, Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. As we continue this journey, through the book of Revelation, and as we draw it to a close, the focus now moves. In chapter 21, the focus was on the new Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, I told you, is two words. Jerusalem, I told you, is two words. Yeru and Zalema. Ne Zalema. Now these two words, when you join them, give you a perspective. One, the first one, Yeru regards to pointing to. Yeru flowing from. Like a, a river will flow. That is the first implication. The second implication would be if you go to water and were throwing it away. And you are directing it. That is the same word Yeru. Now the third one is if you are pointing to a direction and that is the implied in the text that we have in chapter 21. Now, shalom, that is where we get the word shalom, that's where we get the word shalom. Shalom, we get the word shalom. For many of us, it implies peace. But what it actually entails is nothing missing and nothing broken. Basically, it points to whole wholeness. It points to completeness. Now, when you join these two words, you then have pointing to completeness. So in relative to what the text is all about, when John was invited to see the bride, the bride of the Lamb, he was invited to see the bride in 
his completeness. And it is no wonder that you see such glory that is being described in an entire chapter. Because it points to a bride that has been washed by the water of the word and now has been presented to the Lord himself glittering and glowing with all glory and majesty and power. But now the focus moves away from the bride. And the focus now moves to the question how are we to live in light of the truth that has now been passed on to us? Because we now have a concluding speech that is spoken directly to an audience and who is us. And this is pointing to the view of getting us ready for our Lord's return. So the words that we find in the closing chapter deserve our respect. They deserve our honor. They deserve our attention. And they deserve our faith. Why? You may ask. It is because now we have a multifold testimony of various voices testifying of the fact that Christ is coming back. We saw the testimony of the angel. And we saw the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. We saw the testimony of the Spirit of the Lord. Speaking to the church. We have now seen the testimony of the bride. And we are still seeing the testimony of John. Who is the conveyor of this truth to us, the church? Now, when we look at the verses that we just read, I want us to see them through the very beginning of the chapter of this book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 1, from verse 1 to verse 3, this is what the Bible says. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John who bore witness. Now look at the channel of how this goes. The revelation is about Jesus Christ. It is not about end time. It is about Jesus Christ. The person of Jesus Christ. And this was given by God. And God is giving to his servants. And what he wants us to see is the events that are about to take place and revealing how Jesus Christ will be the principle will be the revelation will be the subject matter will be the prime mover of the events that will unfold at the end of time. And the Bible says he sent. Who sent? God sent. And signified it by an angel. The angel 
that takes us back to the Gospels. Malaika, Chituzayeri Mundiri. Where there was a priest called Zechariah. We wali wo kabona it was Zachariah. And he received a message from God. Na we wo bako kuveri kato. And when he doubted this message, katu we abu sabu sabu baka bodo. Because he was advanced in age. Kubanga iya diya kadi mumiaka. The angel tells Zechariah. Malaika na gamba Zachariah. I am Gabriel. Bampita Gabriel. And I stand in the presence of God. Nimi. In other words, this is not an ordinary message. This message comes from the very presence of God. So here we see God signifying this message by an angel. And the angel then goes to John. And what is to be born witness about. Are two things. He is to bear witness. Of the word of God. Number one. Number two. He is to bear witness to the testimony of Jesus Christ. Number three. To all the things that he saw. And then we have a beatitude. A promise of blessing. And it says, Blessed is he who number one reads. So this book is intended to be read. But not just be read. He says, And those who bear the words of this prophecy. Bear is to carry. So you don't just just read, you are to carry the words of this text. And not just carry them. The Bible goes on to say, and keep those things which are written in it. Why? Because the time is near. So the key not that we get from here. When you bridge it with what we see in verse 6, we get the message that the words in here are words of the prophecy but they are faithful and they are true. That means they will come to pass. They are accurate and they are dependable. We can trust them because they will come to pass to the very later. So what is the assurance? Because they are words from God. The same God who inspired the prophets of all to prophesy. By his spirit. Has now sent the angel. To show John. The things which must come shortly. So then. There is a switch. After the angel has spoken, then we hear the voice of the Lord himself bearing testimony to the words that have been spoken. He adds, I am coming quickly. He says, Behold, I am coming quickly. And these are the words that we see repeated three times in this chapter. Verse 12, he says, Behold, I'm coming quickly. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his word. In verse 20, he says, He who testifies of these things says, Surely, I am coming quickly. And the angel adds in verse 10 to bring a sense of urgency to what we see. He tells John, Don't seal the 
prof, words of prophecy. Agama yoka tote ka kabone roko bigambo binebiobu nabi. Because the time is near. Kubange visera vitu. So the assurance we have from Jesus. Obukaka fwe tu inoku very yes. And the angel. Ne malaika. Point us to this fact. Bitu lagama zimaga. That whatever John see. Biona yoka nabi alaba. Will be fulfilled. Bija kutu kirizimu. Now where we have a problem. Obuzi wetubu sangi. Is where he says soon. Wagama anti mangu. So when he says soon. Wagama anti mangu. The question that comes to the mind of many people. How soon? What we fail to see. Is that through the pages of scripture. There is God employing us through his word. To the times that we are living in. And how, what is expected of us during this time. Look at what Paul writes to the church in Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 29 to 31 this is what he says. He says, and I said to these brothers the time is limited. So, from now on, those who have wives should be as though they had none. Those who weep as though they did not weep. Those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice. Those who buy as though they did not possess. And those who use the word as though they did not make full use of it. For this world in its current form is passing away. The same message is recorded by Peter. In the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3. From verse 3 to verse 7. He writes to the church and says, that he wants us to know this as a priority. That scoffers will come in the last day. Walking according to their own lust. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? So that is what we are saying today. It says, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the day of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. And he says, but the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and the perdition of the ungodly men. Therefore he urges us again recalling back to what the Lord Jesus spoke to his disciples during his discourse in Matthew 24 and he says be alert since you don't know the day the Lord is coming. This is why you must be ready. Because the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not know, at an hour that you do not expect. And he painted the parable of the ten virgins. And in 25 13, he adds, Therefore, be alert. 
that. Because you do not know the day or the hour. What is the implication? This is what Paul tells the church in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 2 to verse 4. Verse 2. And he says, For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. When they say peace and of security, then sudden destruction comes on them like labor pains come on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you Brothers are not in the dark. For this day to overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of light. And sons of the day. We do not belong to the night. Or the darkness. What is the message that comes out of these scriptures that we just quoted? It is sevenfold. Number one, Jesus is returning one day. His return will be physical. It will be visible. It will be in power. It will be in great glory. Like it is spoken of in Acts chapter 1 verse 11. Where the angel witnessed and said this same Lord. The same way he has Gone Descend. The second message that we pick from there is that we do not know the day or the hour of his return. So number three, we should then live in with imminent understanding of his return. So our lives should be lived in view of his imminent return. So number four, when he comes, all people will know it. Number five, he will judge all people personally, rewarding believers according to their faithfulness and punishing unbelievers in the lake of eternal fire. Number six, he will create a new heaven and a new earth setting everything right. And number seven, will be his return, the glory of eternity with Christ that will cause all the former things to go. The earth as we know it will fade and the new heavens and the new earth will come. Then he says, I come quickly. The question is, how quickly? How quickly? Now, the understanding there, we miss the word. The word that is used for quickly brings a few questions. Is God being vague? Is he being disingenuous? See, the word quickly is the word tachu in Greek. Tachu means shortly without delay. Soon. Suddenly. So, when you have that understanding, that is what is predict, put in perspective here. And for many of us, we look at this word 
and say the Lord I think has delayed. But that delay is only from our perspective. You see, the Lord is yeah. not limited by time. He does not sit in time. He is before time. He holds all time in his hand. So when he says quickly, it is with the intent of purpose. So what do we understand from his mention of the word quickly? So what we see as delay, should be hard for us to understand. Number one, that it is God and not human, not angelic beings that is in command of sovereign history. History is his story. So everything that we see it is because he had either predetermined it or he has allowed it. Basically, that's what Peter tries to tell us. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, he shows us that God reckons time differently from the way we reckon it. And then he gives us the purpose that his delay is a merciful opportunity for sinners to receive him before it is too late. So his delay is an act of grace that enables us to live in tension between God's present and God's future. Why? For those of you who happen to be alive at the turn of the two, this 21st century, you, and you saw the uncertainty with which we lived. As December 31st, 1999 clocked, the uncertainty with regard to transport, the uncertainty with regard to computers, with regard to the banks, people withdrew their money because they expected that the computer world will crash. But travel was postponed because people thought planes will crash. Why? Because that is what comes with uncertainty. Remember, we are not we are not omniscient. We are not omnipresent. We are not omnipotent. Much as we try to elevate our status, this belongs to God. So now, if we don't know the future, it then clouds and we are not in control. It crowds our decision making. Now, just imagine that he knew when the, the world would end. But you don't know what will happen. Just imagine the uncertainty you would have. But God has not left us that way. And that's why we have this book of Revelation. To help us understand who holds the future. And he who holds the future has spoken to us to give us the certainty that everything is under control. So, Jesus' declaration that he is coming soon 
He also just doesn't leave it like that. He doesn't leave you in that level of uncertainty. He leaves us with an assurance. He leaves us with something to hold on to. He leaves us with a blessed promise. And in verse 7 he says, Blessed is he who heeds the other version, some versions say who keeps. Bible in Akuma. Some versions say who guards. Bible Gamba That is the Greek word telio. So it involves keeping, it involves guarding. The words of the prophecy of this book. Now, guarding is very much the way we know how to guard. When somebody gives you something and says, guard it, what they mean that when they come back, Round. They expect you to find that thing in the same state they left it with. You. They don't want it to be tampered with. So why guard and protect the word of this prophecy? This word must be protected. It, it must work. be defended against those who deny that it is the true prophecy. It must be protected against those who say that it is irrelevant. It must be defended against those who deny its authority. It must be defended Defended against interpreters who obscure its meaning. And the blessing comes to those who are obedient to guard and defend this word. So, how do you heed? How do you guard? How do you keep this book? Or the word of the book of Revelation. So after reading the words of this prophecy, those who have put their faith in Jesus Christ. So this message is not going to those who have not placed their faith in Jesus Christ. The responsibility is placed on every man and every woman that has placed their faith in Jesus Christ. That draws us to do several things. Number one, to love him more. As we see what he has done, that love compels us. That love stirs us up. That love draws us to the cross. That love draws us to be in fellowship with him. That love draws us to seek to be more like him. Number three, that love draws us to look forward with hope to the resurrection of our bodies. As we anticipate the eternal reward that comes to those who place their faith in Him and work for the kingdom of God. This, how do we get this book? This should draw us to understand the fearful judgment that is coming unto all those that are unsaved. And those that have not come to the knowledge of 
the salvation that is by Christ Jesus. It should spur us to call them to repentance and place their faith in Jesus Christ why there is still time. So if you are listening to us today, if you are watching us today and you have not placed your faith in Jesus Christ, this is the moment your salvation is near. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Why there is still time. This number five is to keep the book of Revelation by obeying the commands of Jesus Christ. What we see here are not suggestions. What we see here are not up for public interpretation or opinion. What we see here is the word of the Lord himself. And if we regard him as Lord, then we should obey what he says. So, when we look at the book of Revelation, we are not coming to a place where we are saying, okay, what is this that we pick out? What is it that we give? No. This is God's timetable. This is God's plan. And everything will be executed. So this is a call for us to be ready to live daily in fellowship with him. So we need to be constantly and continually filling our hearts and minds with his word. So we need to be sharing his word with others. But also obeying the same word. And we need to be living in the light of the prophecies of this book. Bible prophecy is not a novelty to satisfy our curiosity concerning the future. No. Bible prophecy ought to be life changing. It ought to draw a response from every one of us. Our knowledge that the Lord is coming shortly ought to drive us to the Lord. It ought to drive us to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It ought to draw us to get the resources from the Lord himself. And we saw that picture in chapter 21 when we saw saw the river that comes from the throne of God and of the Lamb and now fills the city. And this river explained is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. And it is this Holy Spirit that we need to lean on to draw from the resources that we need to accomplish four tasks on this earth in light of the coming of Jesus Christ. What are those four tasks? Number one, so that we are able to live above the rising tide of godlessness. We are living in a time where godliness is mocked at. 
nga okutia katondo bo kuweleza katonda kunyomebwa we are living in a time tuli mu bisera where the mention of the name jesus ti woya tuleli nya yesu will label you in a certain category of people who are inconsiderate abantu bakubalango omuntu ayawukana ku bintu ebikole ensonge enkuru when you talk about the lordship of jesus christ we mukogera ku bukuru bwa yesu christo they tend to label you by nengeri je bakulaba mu as being backward bakulaba anti gwe oli wadda nyo oli munacha but these are the times we're living in ne bido bye bitulimu and in order for us to live above that time katifo kutambulia wa guru bwech wembu ya geyo we require the resources tweta age because it's separate which only the holy spirit can give o moyo mtu kuvya binina era ya bigaba we require these resources tweta age because it's separate no number two, to be able to stand firm echo kubiri okuyimirira anga tunywe de against the spirit of the antichrist o kuwaka nyo moyo gwo mulabe wa christo which even now era ne kakalo six to capture the minds and the hearts of men and women akolera dalo okuwamba emitima nebirozo byabantu through so many channels akoze semi kutu minji from social media aitira kumitimba gano through advertisements aitira mubirango through hobbies aitira mwebi betwagala nyokola through the very things that we would love we yearn to do aitira mwebi bintu byetwagali za dalokola it is to draw our attention away from the word of god amaso gafayagala tugaje ku kigambo cha katonda with the, at, with the objective of getting us off the narrow way agenderera okutukoleti tuve kukubo lilye funda onto the broad way that leads to destruction yingire kukube gazi eri malirizanga tuli mukuzikirira you, you see when they talk about the narrow way but what to ogera kukubo lilye lya funda then that means you can't have a wide road on a narrow way au chite to so ola kujja na mugugunga munene mugumugazi so what will the enemy of your soul do katomulai wewe meyo asala ola ko la cha try and make this road heavy or a gezanazi toyo mugugu guno and jesus said the reason narrow gate at is your gamba wankachi yeyo mfunda so you can't get in with all the luggage to sobola kuyingira ne migugu jojo and many of us in life get stuck idaba nji tutuka ne tukwamba because we can't let go of this lord kuba to sobola kwerekereza omugugu guno we want to go with it oyagalo yingira yo na get the road is narrow naye ngatoro gudo lufunda and narrow is the gate that it leads to ne wanka chifunda e tuyingiza mu bulamu obutabwa that's why the bible tells us in hebrews bible je vetu gama ostawo cha bible to lay aside every weight tweje ko buli mugugu and that sin which does so easily ensnares us ne chibye cho e chitureto kununa looking unto jesus ngama so tukatunuza yesu the author and the finisher o mutandisi ero mu maliriza wo kukiriza kwa faith sometimes in life if said we have to come to a place to know to where we let go of that lord ngatwele tuino kusule emigugu jino where we let go tujijejeko and be able to stand firm tujoke tuyimire ngatuli magulu and said this one tugambe chino cho i have to let go chino nino cherekereza what why do we need these resources ni rwachi tweta ge because we need these resources to be etaga number 3 echo kusatu to be able to live in fellowship tusobolo kutambula mu kutabaganya with our lord and savior okuse chimu ne mukamafe era mulokozi wa in spite of the evil yadenga obubi attempt to thwart us or divert us ngabukolera nyo dala okutujja kumula mwogo or distract us obo okutuma okutu okutujja kubinte ebikulu doesn't it amaze you that you let you let a kwe when you purpose in your heart bo malirira mu mutima gwo to say take some time off and seek the lord tola ngenda kwe ya ula ko nonye mukama take some time off for fellowship with god ngenda kwe ya ula ko mbere ne mukama wange that is the time when all these invitations come in okay kasira ba kujita mu bifo byo dna they are not evil sibya bisibya kola tv but TV. the objective is to keep you occupied neba genderera okusa ke byo kola bi with all the cares of this world goli bize ne byo kola mu nsibi and before you know it me ugoto nachitegera the seed of the word in sigo ye chigambe it comes unproductive in your life ngatesobola kuvala mu bulamu bwo so you require these resources weta ge because it's not enough number 4 
You require these resources to witness effectively. You cannot witness without the Holy Spirit. Jesus puts it this way. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. It says you shall receive power. After that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will then become my witness. The point is you cannot be effective witnesses of Jesus Christ. Without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. This dying world needs Jesus Christ. But this Jesus Christ that he needs can only be made manifest through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So for us to be able to witness effectively to a dying world, we need the resources that the Holy Spirit provides. The reason why the church is powerless now is because we have relied on the mechanism of the world to be able to evangelize to be able to reach out to the world and the results have been appalling because we are not effective we can come up with a marketing strategy. We can come up with all these schemes. But the question is, what is the Holy Spirit saying? If we are not relying on the Holy Spirit, witness of Christ, however nice and romantic, however strategic our intents our plans will be they will come to nothing they will not be effective so we need to rely on the holy spirit to effectively witness to a world that is dying without Jesus Christ. I, I have heard of so many preachers say they will, the world needs you. No. It's not you the world needs. It is Christ that the world needs. So what you need to reveal by your life by your speech by the words you say by the life you live is Christ in you it is Christ that they need it is Christ that we save them it is Christ that we draw them to the cross. Now this cannot happen without the agency of the Holy Spirit. So the more we ignore him, the less effective we are. And once we are not effective, then instead of standing out, we end up conforming. So our readiness, our preparation for the end time, for the coming of Christ, the one who said, Behold, I'm coming quickly. We should live in expectation. And that calls for us every day of our lives to leave them in anticipation of his coming. The best preparer for us. Our greatest friend is the Holy Spirit. And what will happen if we rely on him? 
Several changes will happen. How we view our world will change. Our perspective of our lives will change. Our lifestyle will change. Our purposes will change. Our goals will change. Our priorities because we are walking with the understanding that any day Jesus is coming back. The question is, are you ready? If you are not, you have this moment. Why don't you go before God? Right to gain the muscle gak at wonder. The Bible says all have sinned. Baby, Bonaba, you know, and fallen short of the glory of God. Never that took a cochiti wachak at wonder. There is none righteous. Teddy, you too, kid, if not one. All of us have sinned. But the Bible says, at the Bible, you gamba. The wages of sin is death. But the yes. gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So today, you can receive that gift of God. God has given the gift. It is up to us to receive it. So today you can receive Jesus in your life. Believe in your heart. And the Bible says, you confess with your mouth and are saved. Today is your day of salvation. Why don't you make this prayer? And allow Jesus to make the difference. Not for now, just. But for all eternity. Say God of glory. I thank you. Because you looked out to me, a sinner. And sent Jesus as the Savior of the world. I believe that He died for my sins. And today, Lord Jesus, I receive you as the gift from God. As the Lamb of God who takes out the sins. Lord Jesus, I believe you died and rose again from the dead. Today, I come to you and I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. Write my name. In the book of life. Lord, I thank you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. That from this day forward, my life will take a turn and will live in light of your coming again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now, for you who is born again, they still have a message to carry. They still have a purpose to live for. You have to guard this truth. You have to carry this truth. And if the Lord tarries, you will pass this, this truth on to as many people as God allows you to meet. And your reward you will receive when you meet him. God rich bless you as you obey the word of this word. So to everyone we thank you so until we meet again next Tuesday, from Dominion Church International Dominion Church. we're saying shalom God bless you Amen Amen